In the 1980s, action figure lines and the media that inspired them were rarely on par with one another. The Robotech show was far superior to the Robotech toys, while the Wheeled Warriors toys were a lot more fun than the Wheeled Warriors animated series. With Filmation's Ghostbusters, the toys surprisingly fall into the latter category. The show was pretty lame, but the toys? They were awesome! Filmation seemed to have a good relationship with toy companies. Galoob helmed their Black Star lineup of toys, and Filmation and Mattel partnered for a number of years on He-Man and She-Ra, and they would team up again to deliver Brave Star in the late 80s. However, when Filmation went looking for a merchandising partner to guide their Ghostbusters toy line, the big companies shuttered their doors. Kenner was behind the toys for the real Ghostbusters, and with Columbia Pictures leading it all, other toy companies feared a lawsuit if they made competing products. So Filmation eventually found a partner in Shopper, a small toy outfit best known for the innovative children's games Cooties, Ants in the Pants, and Don't Break the Ice. Whether it was a lack of experience in marketing an animated series or just pure moxie, Shopper managed to deliver one of the most amazing action figure lines of the 80s. That's not to say they were the most innovative, and certainly they weren't the most successful. But when it comes to accuracy to the show they're based on, Ghostbusters is second to none. Because of the short lifespan of the series and the competition from the real Ghostbusters, Shopper's toys didn't last long in 1986, and most were sent off to Europe, which makes collecting them quite a challenge. The line consisted of 12 figures, 4 vehicles, and one massive playset all of which can be marked either by the name Shopper or Tyco, as Tyco purchased Shopper that same year. The figures are striking, almost all of them carefully sculpted to look like their cartoon counterparts. In the lineup, we have Jake Kong, Eddie Spencer, Tracy, Jessica, Futura, Primeval, Mysteria, Scared Stiff, Haunter, Fibface, Bangster, and a two-pack of Belfry and Batarat. The detail is incredible, and the colors are vivid. The figures mostly have five points of articulation, like Star Wars figures, with some of the robed characters like Primeval and Mysteria being exceptions. The figures stand around the height of Silverhawks. They're so well made, it's instantly regrettable Shopper was unable to finish off the villains in a second wave. Characters like Sir Trancelot would have been awesome. There are a few drawbacks to these figures when it comes to playing with them. For one, the backpacks. A few of the heroes come with detachable backpacks that are attached by these very fragile peg posts. And when you want to switch them out between the characters, get mentally prepared for one or both of the backpacks to break. And that makes these backpacks very hard to find intact when you're collecting them secondhand. These particular figures seem to attract a kind of mold. Many of the figures I acquired for this video have mold marks on them. You have to salute Shopper for going all out on this line. Most toy lines in Wave 1 really rein it in until they're sure that show is a hit. They leave key settings and characters unproduced, which makes it difficult for a kid to build out the universe of the series. Not so with Ghostbusters. Aside from a few ancillary villains, everything is here. Shopper produced the minor vehicles, such as the Scare Scooter and Futura's Time Hopper, which had battery-operated sound features. They even produced Primeval's Paranormal Piano, the Bone Troller. Then there were the two showstoppers of the line, the Ghost Buggy and the Ghost Command Center. 
Try as we might, Retroblasting has not yet been able to acquire the Ghost Command playset, a holy grail of 1980s toys, and a massive centerpiece complete with every major feature seen on the show. But to give you a sense of scale, we were able to acquire the Ghost Buggy, and the Ghost Command playset has a garage capable of housing it. The Ghost Buggy is a feat of engineering by Shopper. In the show, the buggy can transform into a plane, a boat, and a submarine. The Shopper toy is no exception. Using a series of flip-out features and swap-out parts, the buggy does all of these changes with ease. Unfortunately, Shopper relied on hinge clips in the body of the buggy, which was made from a rigid, brittle plastic, so these hinge clips are easy to break off if you're transforming the vehicle often. But just like the figures, the detail is amazing. Nothing was left out. Looking at these toys, I can't help but notice that Ghostbusters is decidedly unisex. Shopper incorporated features that would appeal to both boys and girls, providing the possibility that the toys would cross gender boundaries. First off, there are three female characters in this 12-figure line. That's 25% of the characters, an unheard-of ratio for 1980s figure lines. Star Wars had 12 figures in the first run, of which only one, Princess Leia, was a girl. G.I. Joe had 13 figures in the first wave, and only one, Scarlet, was female. He-Man had eight figures with only Tila. So for Shopper to step up with three female characters in the line took major guts. By contrast, Kenner's real Ghostbusters didn't include Janine for the first few years. Jessica, Futura, and Mysteria's figures also have real rooted hair that would have appealed to girls who liked styling the hair of their dolls and She-Ra toys. I like styling the hair of my dolls. These platform shoes are pretty cool. But this is kind of weird. I don't know what that's for. The Ghost Command Center had a bunch of features for the boys to tinker with, but it also gave off that dollhouse impression that might have appealed to 80s girls. It was neither a pink dream house nor a steel fortress. With exact likenesses, great variety, massive cross-gender appeal, with vibrant colors, Shopper's Ghostbusters toys are just as amazing for kids as they are on display in a collector's case. So what happened? The truth is, it wouldn't have mattered how good these toys were, because they didn't stand a chance against the immense popularity of the movie-themed real Ghostbusters. Bad timing combined with brand confusion and sent kids running in droves away from that haunted command center right into that New York firehouse, where the majority of ghosts are busted rather than befriended. Speeding like a space brain one more time tonight.